The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Please be seated. <coughs> Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sometimes we have to pour ourselves out for others, even when we're running on empty. Maybe we haven't eaten and we're hungry, or we haven't slept and we're tired, but then in the midst of our emptiness, someone needs us. And so we pour ourselves out for them, even though we are empty to start with. Those of you who are parents understand this in a way that I never will. In our gospel text, Jesus is running on empty. He is exhausted, and he has just learned that John the Baptist, his cousin, was murdered by King Herod. Sad and tired, Jesus rows his boat across the Sea of Galilee to get some rest. He wants to spend some time with his heavenly Father, and so he heads to a deserted place. He seeks an empty place in which to fill himself with God's presence. But then a crowd shows up. They heard that Jesus had gone to the other side of the lake. And so they come to Jesus along the shoreline. They want Jesus to heal them. And he has compassion on them. Jesus is running on empty. And yet, he pours himself out for the needs of others. But you see, Jesus' entire life was one of emptying himself and pouring himself out. This began when he gave up his divine glory to become human, and it continued all the way to the cross. In Philippians, Paul tells us that Jesus was in the form of God. He did not count equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So Jesus poured himself out that day like he always did. He healed their sick. 
when it was late in the day, the disciples noticed that the people needed something to eat. They asked Jesus to dismiss the crowd so that they could go and buy some food. But Jesus said that the disciples should feed the people instead. And for this, they had only five loaves and two fishes. So Jesus sat the crowd down. Taking the loaves and the fish, he gave thanks to God. Then he began to divide the loaves and fish. He gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowd. When all was said and done, they fed 5,000 men, plus women and children, and there were 12 baskets of food left over, one for each disciple. Well, what are we to make of this? Was this just another miracle? Was it merely a generic act to show off the power of God? Or does this miracle have a deeper meaning? I believe that it does. And to discern this meaning, we have to go to the Old Testament. After the fall, God told Adam and Eve that they would surely die. He also said that they would earn their food by the sweat of their brow. So when Jesus healed the sick and when he fed the crowd, this was a sign. It was a sign that Jesus was the Savior who would destroy the curse. He was the seed of the woman who would crush the serpent's head. You see, in healing the sick and feeding the crowd, Jesus showed himself to be the living word of God. The Bible tells us that God's word is living and active. This word creates the world out of nothing. And because it can do that, it can also make bread in the desert. And so it is that God's word sustains us because it is this very word that gives us our daily bread. As Moses told the Israelites, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And Jesus is the incarnation of this word. But feeding the 5,000 also reminds us of the manna that God provided for the Israelites. As the manna fell in the desert, so Jesus fed the 5,000 in a deserted place. And so we see that Jesus' provision of bread recalls God's provision of manna. But there's more. This miracle shows us that Jesus is the living bread, the new manna, fallen for the life of the world. As the manna fell in the desert, so Jesus descended into our world. And as the manna sustained the Israelites, so Jesus sustains us. You see, bread is a symbol of life. And so when we pray, give us today our daily bread, we are asking God to sustain our life. And Jesus is our life. And so we see that Jesus is our bread, but he is no ordinary bread. He is the life-giving bread from heaven. The Israelites ate the manna and died. The 5,000 ate the loaves and fishes and died. But Jesus is the living bread. Those who eat his flesh and drink his blood will never die. And so the feeding of the 5,000 shows us how Jesus comes to us. He comes through word and sacrament. In his word, he comes in the fullness of his power. And in the sacrament, he comes in the emptiness of a life poured out. And here we see the fullness and the emptiness of God. As our creator, Jesus is the living word of God who projects his fullness into the world. And as our Savior, 
He is the living bread who empties himself out that we might be full. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise for the